welcome everyone on behalf of Open Dialogue Foundation. Thank you for joining us in the Zoom hearing. My name is Kasia Szczepska and I'm an advocacy officer at the Open Dialogue Foundation. The title of today's meeting is Police Brutality in Poland, Protecting Citizens and Enforcing Accountability. Our guests uh, will shed light on the alarming issue of escalating police violence against protesters in Poland and how the EU can help. Um, it's important for me to stress that this hearing is an initiative of a number of really brave activists who have faced police abuse firsthand. And as the situation steadily deteriorates and with the Polish authorities switching off mechanism of democratic civilian control, civil activists seek support at the European and international level. And this raises obviously, obviously this raises the question as um, to what extent can, can they expect it? Uh, we have with us today, and I'm delighted uh, uh, that you uh, were able to join us, um, Marta Lempard. Um, uh, Marta uh, is with us. Marta, I don't, Marta is a person that I don't think I have to introduce, but she's the leader of the Polish women's strike, which has led mass nationwide protest against the near total ban on abortion in Poland, who, if I'm not mistaken, has faced around 70 court cases in Poland, including for organizing and participating in peaceful and legal protests. Uh, with us is also Angelika Domańska. Angelika is an activist and a member of activist group Homo Commando, which is combating uh, anti-LGBT sentiments in Poland and is a victim of really countless police abuse. And she will share with us firsthand her truly terrifying story. Um, with us is also Eliza Rutynowska, lawyer at the Civil Development Forum during the day and at night, lawyer assisting detained protesters, uh, cooperating with the Spila Collective, a group coordinating legal aid to arrested persons. Um, next, Ronald Kraszewski, LGBT activist and initiator of the appeal against brutality and impunity of police in Poland, which we will present today. And last but not least, Bartosz Kramek, Polish activist and chairman of ODF Supervisory Board. And I think in, in this crowd of ours, I'm allowed to joke that I was never so exuberant to see my boss uh, like today. Um, Bartek was politically motivated, uh, is politically motivated by the Polish, uh, persecuted by the Polish authorities. Um, and he was just uh, released on bail this Thursday, so we are very happy uh, that he could join us. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to, to thank all of those uh, who supported us those last three weeks, uh, including over 100 international and Polish signers of the appeal initiated by former President and Nobel Peace uh, receiver Lech Wałęsa. Um, I'm also pleased to welcome our co-host, uh, distinguished members of the European Parliament, uh, Mrs. Ramona Strugariu from Romania and uh, Michal Szymeczka from Slovakia, both representing Renew Europe. Many, many thanks to you for, for being uh, with us, for taking the interest in, in this alarming case. Um, the event is officially also co-hosted by Robert Biedroń and Łukasz Kohut, Kohut SND Poland. We are grateful for, for their support, although for some extraordinary reasons they weren't able to join us. We are very happy uh, to have uh, Róża Tun e, uh, right now unaffiliated um, uh, Róża is a European uh, member of the European Parliament from Poland. Thank you for being with us. Um, so thank you again. And I, I will just very briefly um, describe the structure of today's meeting. Before I give the floor to the co-host and guest, very briefly our agenda. We will have welcome remarks by the co-host, then the addresses by our guests, followed by an open floor Q&A for the remaining time of the session. 
Um, and now, um, Mrs. Ramona Strugaryu. Ramona, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, I do feel honored to be here today. This is the, 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 the real feeling and I am extremely, extremely proud how each and every single one of you is carrying this battle. Because it is not only a battle for Poland, it is a battle for Europe. It is a battle for the values that we all believe in. It is um, a battle for democracy, for human rights. Uh, and I think for every single thing that we are also trying to, um, to represent and um, fight for in the European Parliament as well. And, and you know that the European Parliament has been extremely focused uh, on everything that has been happening in uh, Poland. You know that we reacted uh, to, to the abuses, we reacted to the blitzkrieg upon uh, justice and the justice system. Both uh, Mikal and I and all, are also rapporteurs uh, regarding the, uh, the uh, activation of Article 7 and all of the rule of law issues related to Poland and, and Hungary. We also had resolutions strongly condemning the attacks against the protesters, the, uh, the, the, the violence and the abuse of the police, uh, the propaganda against minorities and all of the, the uh, systematic uh, attacks, I would, I would call them, uh, against fundamental rights. But um, looking at everything that has been happening in, in uh, Poland, I do remember to some extent what has happened in my country, in Romania, uh, a few years ago, because we also had uh, massive protests in, in our attempt to defend the justice system, which was under attack at the time. And on the 10th of August, we also had a lot of violence uh, and brutality of, of the police with victims, with questions that are still not answered, uh, with, uh, with people uh, who, who got severely wounded. And some of them left the country, I remember, after, after such attacks. And they, they just decided that they want to go elsewhere and start a different life. Um, and it is, it is true that things have changed uh, uh, since then in Romania. But I do remember that uh, during those months, and it, it was almost a year with massive protests and with people which were, who were, were wishing for something different, um, First of all, we truly uh, count on the, on the support of the European institutions. And it is the same thing that we are trying to do for Poland now, and we will not give up. And I can confirm that we will not give up here and we will continue to, to exert pressure and to, um, to, to use basically every single instrument that we have that is possible to use so that we support our fight. But I also remember some words of, of Vice President uh, Timmermans at the time when we had our discussion on rule of law and, and similar issues in, in Romania. And he said, um, he said that, of course, the Commission will intervene. Of course, that we can activate various mechanisms. Of course, that infringement it, it, it is an option. And all of the statements and all of the resolutions of the Parliament uh, and Article 7 and uh, the rule of law report, um, all of these actions are important. But ultimately, nations are those who determine their own fate. And, and, and the people who are actually deeply involved in this fight every single day and that are uh, there out in the streets like we were, like I was, like some of the colleagues that I have now, Romanian colleagues in the European Parliament got beaten up quite badly during those protests. Uh, we, yes, we are, and you are the ones who will have this ultimate word in changing the faith of Poland, in changing this abusive rules, in changing the mentality and the brutality of the police, in changing the balance uh, and 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 the, the the respect for for rule of law that that you are seeking today. You are those people, 
And if there are hundreds of them, there will be thousands of them and hundreds of thousands of them, like we were to some point, about 600 thousands of us. And uh, yes, I think ultimately this, this was this decisive for, for the way things uh, evolved. I, I, I do feel humble every time in front of such people and in front of their courage, your courage. Uh, and in front of the understanding that you have, despite the authority, uh, the brutality of the Polish authorities, uh, on, on the, the, the importance of dignity, of fundamental rights, and of, of respect for the rule of law. Uh, and I, I would like to simply say that for every single minute and hour of our mandates and of everything that, that we represent here in, in, in Brussels and in the European uh, Parliament, we will stand by you in this fight, but do not give up. Do not give up by all means and under any circumstances, because you will be the ones changing things for Poland primarily. And I'm truly, uh, confident that you will succeed as a matter of fact. Thank you for what you are doing. Uh, Ramona, thank you, if I may. Thank you for those encouraging words, especially since uh, we, are, we met today to discuss how the, the Polish authorities, unfortunately, try to silence the, the, the Polish civil society by, by uh, persecuting them. Um, so now I would like the floor to tell Sineczka. Thank you very much, uh, Kasia, and uh, thanks to uh, the Open Dialogue Foundation for, for putting this together. I think it's, uh, well, I'm privileged to, to be in the presence of, of, of people who are you know, at the front line of the fight for democracy and for European values, as, as, as Ramona has said, often at, at a great you know, personal sacrifice, which is obviously the ultimate, um, the ultimate thing you could do in, in fighting for, for human rights and democracy to, to go out there, even though, um, even though you know you're risking a lot. And I think it's incredibly timely that we, uh, and I'm really looking forward to, to, to the testimonies and to the stories um, of, of, our, of our guests, because my sense is that when, whenever we talk about, um, you know, rule of law issues in, in the European Union, um, in the case of Poland, but also other countries, it's always, it's always very abstract. It's always, um, you know, we talk about independence of the judiciary or, or you know, media freedoms or challenge to, you know, the European uh, legal order um, and obviously, there has been discussion um, in uh, you know in the aftermath of the ruling of the Constitutional Court in Poland. But I think it's 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 all very abstract. Um, and and at, at, and at some point, it's worth um, you know uh, reminding ourselves that it's often quite quite concrete. And 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 uh, you know liberal politics and this sort of uh, authoritarian turn in some member states has has very concrete, even physical um, effects on on individual people. Um, you know, beat protesters or beat uh, prosecutors or beat uh, judges who defy, um, you know, the, the powers that be. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really glad that, that uh, the event has been, uh, that we've been able to organize this event. Um, extremely proud and, uh, and delighted to be, uh, to be here and, and eager to listen to the, to the stories. Um, and obviously it goes without saying that the European Parliament and myself and Ramona and our group are, you know, against uh, excessive police violence on peaceful protesters that kind of is the obvious point to make it's just that um it, it is quite sad that we um we we have to talk about this in the context of a new member state obviously we use these phrases often when we uh when we have you know resolutions on some central european or, or sort of central asian or post-soviet or or middle eastern country um and it's and it's extremely unfortunate that we have to have we have to have this discussion and we have to use those words also in the context of, an, of EU member states, but that's unfortunately where we are. Uh, but it's not uh, an argument um, against talking about it. On the contrary, it's an argument to highlight those stories and to keep, uh, uh, to keep it on the agenda also of the European Parliament and to remind everyone um, that, uh, that there is a problem. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and I hope this event will, will also achieve that. So thank you very much. And I'll stop here. Um, and, um, and I'm eager to listen to the stories. Thank you, Michal. Um, now I give the floor to, to Ruzha. Um, the fact that I had to jump in uh, 
um, suddenly in the very last minute for uh, two other members, um, uh, Łukasz Kohut and Robert Biedroń, who both are in the socialist group and I am in the EPP, uh, not a party member, but EPP, shows that what you do tackles us all. That means that the issue is, as Ramona said, not only Polish, it's a European issue, but it's also over partisan, that I represent two socialist colleagues, you are liberals, um, and we all unite in this movement or in this struggle. I mean, I cannot say that we unite because you do so much that we cannot compare ourselves to you activists, really, Shapoba. Um, but it, that it's for us extremely important and that you are for us extremely important from whichever group or country we are. I must admit with a certain sadness that I would like, of course, many more parliamentarians <clears throat> to be involved, sensitive, uh, um, to react very vividly to what happens. But I think that many of our colleagues do not even realize how extremely difficult the situation is, what you go through. This is for many people inimaginable. So if, even more, I am grateful to those who um, who try to explain to the rest of the world that we, or to the rest of Europe in this case, that we must all very strongly react and give support to you and people like you who are present in many countries. And um, the only thing I can say is that uh, we can promise that we will do it and that we are extremely grateful for, for what you do, grateful to, to ODF with its head, chair, president, Bartosz, you are just incredible, uh, and your wife also, and um, keep strong despite all horrors that you both go through. Um, and, um, and I hope that Michal, Ramona, myself, uh, Łukasz Kochut, Robert Piedro, and, and others, that we will be able to move more of our colleagues from various groups and countries to struggle against this savage behavior of some parts of the police in all countries, not of course only in our homeland. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ruja. I will just add that uh, this, uh, this event is treated by us as a sort of initiation phase of a larger campaign of showing how the police is treating Polish protesters on the street every single day, starting from tomorrow, the Open Dialogue Foundation will publish uh, one uh, a post uh, uh, describing an activist of a a case of an activist being abused by police and uh, for the next two weeks or so we will keep keep shedding the light on, on this abuse and now um, and now I would like to uh, move to our speakers uh, Martha Lempert um, please can you can you start yes thank you so much it's really nice to see you all I won't say especially Bartek of course <laughs> but still it's very nice to see you all um, so oh, I will I will say the same thing I always say. Um, I'm one of the faces I would say of the repression, and I'm the media face, which is very dangerous uh, in the situation we are at. Because uh, oh yes, of course I have the charges up to eight years in jail for not organizing protests, but for many different uh, charges, many different easy issues. Um, because the, the government tries to skip the, the basic uh, public assembly laws and tries to get us to add, add something completely different. Um, but beside that, there are approximately two persons per week who are being charged or at least being questioned or uh, being investigated or have to go to court uh, to testify at their trial. So we can look that at that as the stream that hasn't even started in autumn, but of course it's that that's the the, the influx that that went uh, since then. Uh, that's the stream that's been ongoing. So we're talking about eight months uh, of people being questioned and repressed and charged and brought to court, and it doesn't stop even for a minute. And it's. It started with persons um, from middle, small and middle state cities. It started from the persons with the persons who were organizing protests for the first time, 
um, in the, in the, at the end of last year. It started with young people, especially young girls, with the teachers, with entrepreneurs, uh, with local activists, but those local activists who didn't have any contact with the police and with the system before. Uh, and it was obviously targeted because at the same time, when they were targeted in, in November, especially in the last year, uh, me and Klementina Suhanov and Agnieszka Czerderecka, who were at some point trying to coordinate the protests all over Poland, or at least we were informing, doing press conferences and giving face to, to what, was, um, what was going on. We were, we were not even uh, questioned. We were not called, we were not investigated. Nobody would question us. And we actually appealed for the government not to be so afraid of us and to come and visit us as they know all know uh, our addresses and we are, when we are located. So we are not looking at some temporary action. We're looking at something that has started some time ago and it started for good last November and it's been ongoing since then. And with most of the people, we're not looking at these very heavy charges, but the pattern is all the same. Um, it's usually not the assembly law breaking. It's usually something else. It's about putting an advertisement illegally. So putting a poster somewhere or destroying property by putting a poster somewhere um, or uh, with the COVID regulations, which are obviously unconstitutional and, and, and they cannot be used against us. Um, and, and also blocking the traffic, but with the traffic laws, with the laws that we have about uh, traffic. So we see the situation that has been ongoing in many other countries uh, when the authoritarian government is using absolutely different charges, absolutely different laws and penalties to actually squeeze the right to protest, to actually punish people for organizing protests and participating in the protests. And this is a great problem for academics, it's a great problem for human rights organizations. It's a great problem also for politicians because it needs actually admitting that uh, we know what is this all about. We see that this is something hidden behind something else. Uh, so kind of calling out um, that we see the pattern and we see the scheme and we know that this is what, that this is about uh, the right to, to express. It's about the right to protest. It's about the public assembly. Um, uh, right being executed. And this is a huge problem. And, and this is one of the postulates that we've been uh, having and, and, and acknowledging for most time that we need academics and we need politicians and we need human rights organizations to actually acknowledge that this is not about putting legal advent advertisement. It's not about uh, destroying property and it's not about blocking the traffic. It's about the right to protest being executed by the citizens. We need that, we need that breakthrough. Uh, and we need those specialists and professionals to find a way because the question is how can we do that? How can they uh, differentiate from actually things uh, going under those laws um, uh, when are, they are really happening? I don't know and I don't, this is not my role uh, to give advice. This is the role of people who are professionals, who are specialists to find a way to actually acknowledge what is going on. So this is the first issue. The second issue is that it all comes to what we are talking about. It doesn't come to the hashtag photos. It's not about even the, the worst human stories that we might have. It's about the rule of law and it's about the judicial independence because the, this is where the tools are. And we can make uh, a lot of meetings and we can talk a lot about what's, what's happening because people need to acknowledge what is happening. Uh, but the result always has to be uh, the tools being used about the rule of law in Poland and about judicial independence in Poland. We wouldn't have had the ban on abortion if we had judicial independence and if we had the rule of law. We wouldn't have had a lot of many other things happening just now, uh, the poll exit looming over us, if we had judicial independence and if we had the rule of law. And I know it's easier to just concentrate on how difficult our lives are. And it's really something that, that we see that European politicians um, are acknowledging that, but this is still too little. Because at the end of all these discussions about Polish activists, about the harassment and repression, we need to see the tools being used about the rule of law in Poland, about the judiciary independence in Poland, about the budget conditionality. That's the outcome, not just the solidarity thing and not just the human story thing, uh, because the tools are there. 
And if they were used, we wouldn't have the situation that we have now. If they were used properly and on time, we wouldn't have to meet here and tell those stories. And I use the story and I use our stories to, to, to basically say that. We are in such a state that when we receive death threats, because we get, I get about 50 per day, uh, and when we receive the bomb threats and when we call the police and the police says that they won't come because, yeah, not. Uh, we are used to that. And at some point we started thinking, and I started thinking that it comes with the job. The fact that you are being threatened that someone might kill you, that you're receiving emails informing you that you have bomb in your office planted and so on. It's a part of the job. It shouldn't be a part of any job. But this is just a story that shows that this is what's at stake. Because we are lo also looking at the state being against the citizens. So we are looking at the situation when, when wherever, wherever, and it will be, some, people will tell, talk more about it. When something happens to us, or something might happen to us as activists, our state won't react. People who will do us harm will not be brought to justice. They will not be charged. Nobody will intervene. They will not go to jail. And this is the message that we're, talking, we're getting from the state forces, from the state police, from the state persecutors. We don't get that from the courts because we still have some judicial independence. That's why this is so important. So back to that. When we have our state against us, all we have left are some scraps of the rule of law and some scraps of judicial independence. If it's done, we are done. Yeah, Marta, thank you so much. I'm sorry, I guess I played this role of uh, time police today. Yeah. And I would like to give the voice right now to uh, Angelika Dobańska. And Angelika uh, will really present you a very grim story of her uh, persecution. So we will have an opportunity to to really uh, to listen to a really a very dramatic, I would say, incident. Dzień dobry, nazywam się Angelika Domańska, będę miała tłumacza, gdyż jestem po prostu mega zestresowana i czuję się tak trochę jak na przesłuchaniu. Przepraszam. Bliżej mikrofonu chyba musisz. Robert, if you could, uh, if you could use headphones or just get closer to the mic. Yeah. Okay, I will get, I'll get closer. <laughs> so um, my name is Robert Koszewski. I'm uh, Rano's brother. I uh, will be helping in Angelika with translation. So um, uh, I'm also active in the United States. Uh, Okay. Please, Angelika, present your story. Jestem samodzielną mamą dwójki dzieci, 17-letniej dziewczynki i 3-letniego niepełnosprawnego chłopca. She is a single mother of a 17 years old girl, uh, underage girl, and a three year old boy, which has disability. Przez ostatnie sześć lat byłam wielokrotnie represjonowana przez władze polskie za swoją działalność. Dziesiątki razy byłam legitymowana przez policję. Okay. Um, I am an activist for past six years. I've been ID by police. Tens of times for no reason uh, at the legal protests, uh, uh, legal and peaceful protests, and um, I was twice I was stopped and detained by police. Byłam dwukrotnie zatrzymywana na tak zwanym dołku oraz dwukrotnie po po pobiciu przez kont manifestantów. Wylądowałam na uh, szpitalnym oddziale ratunkowym uh, i dwukrotnie było to uh, przy biernej postawie policji polskiej. Twice I was uh, twice I was uh, um, uh, detained, arrested, and uh, that resulted in uh, ending up in an emergency room in the critical conditions. And 
uh, as a result of uh, being uh, assaulted by uh, some hooligans. Mm. Pierwszy, one, one time was also. Pierwszy raz nastąpiło to podczas obchodów tak zwanej miesięcznicy smoleńskiej w 2017 roku, kiedy zaatakowała mnie sekta smoleńska za to, że pokazałam Jarosławowi Kaczyńskiemu białą różę i nazwałam go kłamcą. Um, first time uh, it was during uh, uh, so, uh, there, there's in Poland they saw uh, the memor is a memorial every month for the Smolensk uh, 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 crash of the plane and she presented a white rose to the uh, head to the head of a party the Polish party piece Jarosław Kaczyński and the, and she was protesting against ban of abortion, which is uh, being pressed uh, um, by the church, by the Polish church, Catholic church. And she was beaten uh, up by the counter protesters. Uh, yes, so those were two instances where, where, when Angelica, if I may add, was severely beaten. Uh, Powiem tak, Robert ma napisane, co chcę powiedzieć, i czasem wyprzedza to, co, czego jeszcze nie powiedziałam. Yes, she, she has it written. Uh, this little, uh, let's, okay, let's take the okay, I, I stopped on this uh, that you were, were uh, the church. Okay. And then, yes, okay, continue. Więc, tak, tak. Uh, Just... Więc w momencie, kiedy. Uh, kiedy uh, Ja byłam e, protestować wewnątrz kościoła i, e, i e, wykrzyknęłam, że ten kościół e, jest e, mój, zostałam e, obalona na ziemię, wyprowad e, wyciągnięta z tego kościoła, a przed kościołem e, policjanci powiedzieli, że nie mogą mi usunąć, e, ale e, że, e, faszyści, że faszyści mogą i, I dokładnie to zrobili, zostałam zrzucona ze schodów a policja nie reagowała oraz nie wezwała pomocy. The, the first time was in the church because she went to an mass and she said that the church is also her because she is Catholic. And they told the her that uh, they carry her out of the church. They forcefully carry her out of the church and throw her down the stairs. And the police said they can't do nothing about it, but the Polish fascists can do whatever they want. Police didn't inter they didn't intervene in this action because she was thrown at the church out of the church by the fascists. Po obu tych zdarzeniach prokuratura umorzyła wszelkie postępowanie przeciwko napastnikom. Za to postawiła zarzuty karne mi za pierwszym razem zarzut zarzucono mi uniemożliwianie działania organom państwa, a po tym jak zostałam zrzucona ze schodów. Prokuratura wszczęła śledztwo przeciwko mnie za tak zwaną obrazę uczuć religijnych. So the first time, what was the first time? I'm sorry. Pierwszy, za pierwszym razem uniemożliwiałam uh, działania. The, uh, the first time is she uh, was charged with uh, objection of uh, uh, interfering, objection of interfering with uh, the, uh, what was it? Uh, Police actions. Active, active, <laughs> Maybe I will jump in and help out to uh, if that's fine with you guys. So uh, the so, problem is that the the cases that Angelica initiated against the abusers were dropped by the politicized prosecutor office. Instead, she actually. Uh, was presented with charges in both of those cases. Mm, okay. Uh, uh, także uh, może, może tak uh, pokrótce opowiem, co się ogólnie działo uh, w, moim, uh, w moim życiu przez te sześć lat. Uh, przez cały ten okres próbowano mnie wielokrotnie uh, zastraszyć. Uh, policja rozpytywała so moich sąsiadów. She has to say she has several happened to her uh, during the 68. She was being investigated uh, and blackmailed, and then she was being um, basically uh, the police went around and asked questions. 
Okay. W styczniu 2018 roku ku przerażeniu moich sąsiadów w rodzinnej wsi pojawiła się Agencja Bezpieczeństwa Wewnętrznego i rozpoczęła poszukiwania mnie we wszystkich dotychczasowych miejscach mojego zamieszkania, czyli łącznie w siedmiu miejscach nie szukali. In January um, uh, 2018, uh, police started uh, going around all her all her places that she used to live and the place that she was currently residing, and uh, started an investigation. The name, the organization, uh, the organization, uh, agency of. Uh, um, Internal security safety agency. security agency you started investigating her asking around in the, in the neighborhood and um, uh, in all the places she used to live uh, she said uh, she had uh, lived in seven places Please continue. Mm. Okay. Um. Właśnie to rozpytywanie i to wszystko doprowadziło do tego, że moi sąsiedzi zaczęli mnie postrzegać jako kryminalistkę i przy każdej możliwej okazji donosić na moje zachowanie do służb. Byłam tak. Because of that, because of the police asking around the neighborhood, the neighbors, she was being treated by the neighbors as a criminal and she uh, uh, to she to 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 and uh, that caused that the neighbors started to report her, uh, her behavior they called it strange behavior but it was not strange behavior to the police i z, i z tak zwanej w Polsce to jest opieka społeczna, która zajmuje się, e, zajmuje się między innymi odbieraniem dzieci. They also reported that behavior to the social services that, that uh, take care of children and they reported her, her behavior that possibly she may be not fit to take, um, take care of children. Okay. Um. Żeby, żeby po prostu zmienić otoczenie dla mojej starszej córki, która sobie nie dawała, nie dawała rady z obelgami, wyzwiskami i wiecznymi odwiedzinami policji i, i służb w domu, przeprowadziłam się do Warszawy. She said that uh, because uh, her daughter couldn't handle the situation of being asked around and, and being uh, um, uh, Uh, basically harassed, her daughter was harassed. She decided to ch change her place of residence and move to Warsaw, hoping that uh, it will get better for her and her family. Mm. Jednakże po, po przeprowadzce do Warszawy e, e, represje nie skończyły się. E, I chciałabym e, może opowiedzieć o tym, a, co się stało 7 sierpnia. Uh, and she moved to Warsaw, but the story didn't end. They, they continue to uh, repress her and, and harass her. And there is another story about this. That she... Słuchajcie, ja was bardzo przepraszam, ale moglibyście teraz już, już, już kończyć, bo niestety nie, nie mamy czasu, wiecie, więc tak bardzo, bardzo krótko jednym zdaniem, dobrze? Ja słyszę, dobrze, do, to, dobrze. Okej, okay. jednym, jednym zdaniem się za bardzo nie da, ale ogólnie chodzi o to, że zostałam, zostałam zatrzymana, głodzono mnie, nie podano mi leków, przez 18 godzin trzymano mnie bez snu. Na koniec, kiedy zaczęłam tracić przytomność, policja włączyła kamery, żeby mieć dowód na to, że jeśli umarłam, jeśli nie wyjdę z tego żywa, to, to oni mają dowód po prostu na to, że umarłam śmiercią naturalną. She said that uh, she was detained and for 18 hours with no food, no medicine. And also the police, uh, she fainted, uh, she... Uh, was um, uh, very close to a coma and the police turned on the camera so they would have proof that she they are not responsible what happens to her if she dies. Uh, 
that they, they are not responsible for that. She was uh, refused medical care, food Since and water at police station. Okay. Since we are running out of time and I'm extremely uh, s s sorry for this, uh, we will share the Angelica's story with you, which is a really green one and, um, and, a, and a, we can talk about it uh, for a long time. Uh, and I really want you to actually to get, uh, to get to know her case because it's truly frightening. I can testify to it. Uh, so maybe we will have uh, some, time, some more time during the Q&A, but for now I will give the floor to Eliza okay. Rutinowska, okay. who, who is a lawyer and who actually also had a chance to defend Angelika uh, during one of, of those cases that were that were, um, that Angelica was charged with. Right, thank you so much, Kasia. And uh, again, it is lovely to see Angelica outside of the courtroom and outside of police precincts. Um, but for now, I would just like to say how grateful I am for this opportunity to be able to speak to all of you and to all of those who are listening to us um, and who might listen to this later on since I know that this will be recorded. Um, I just wanted to paint you a little picture because I know that I don't have much time just to show you exactly what we are dealing with. Imagine um, an August summer evening and you're at a friend's house. You're both discussing your jobs and you're hanging out and you're having fun. And then you turn on the TV just to you know, switch on to the music channel for some, for some time, but you turn on the news channel instead and you see what is going on on the streets of your city and then you get a call are you free what do you mean am i free it's 10 o'clock in the evening i mean I'm, I'm at home are you free to go to the police precincts because we have around 50 people that are being detained right now that are being picked up on the streets because of rainbow flags that they are carrying because that they might look like protesters and we need lawyers. We need anybody who has the capacity to represent someone. I was a first year attorney trainee at the time. Uh, that was last year. And my first thought was, I am not qualified. I can't go. But then I heard that we don't have enough lawyers. You have to go. You first have to pick up your uh, power of attorney from one of the practicing attorneys at the main police precinct and then go and look for detained protesters in different police precincts because we don't know where they are. And that's what you do. You show up at the main police precinct in Warsaw, which is surrounded by police officers that are not letting you in, regardless of the fact that you have an attorney trainee card with you. You're dressed in a summer dress, um, you're not prepared to go out and, and look for people at police precincts where you have police armed from head to toe and you can't even see their faces. And you pick up your power of attorney through bars, through window bars, because they're not letting you in to get that piece of paper. The only name you have is one name and you have no idea how many other people are being detained at that police precinct, but you go anyway. Um, you are constantly being thrown out from that police precinct because you can only have two people in at the same time because of pandemic um, issues. But of course, that is just a means to get you to go away. Um, and, the, and But you stay. You stay until 2.30 in the morning. And that's when they decide to tell you that they will not be letting you in to see your client because it's too late. And regardless, they're going to stay overnight anyway. So please show up the next day. And that's what you do. You show up the next day. That was the rainbow night that Angelica was already referring to. Um, and uh, that was the one moment when we knew that something has changed. We were no longer um, you know, with protests on the streets that you know, might end up in, with some detainments. Um, but you know, regardless of that, we might win in courts, et cetera. This was going to be a more uh, organized action by the police. And that turned out to be very true for the next months with the women's strikes. The group of lawyers, um, I want to make it very clear that I am just one of many, many lawyers who have put on their, um, the, their private lives on hold really, um, to be on call 24 seven um, to help peaceful protesters, to make them feel safe, that they will not be left alone 
once they are detained. Um, that group of lawyers has called themselves informally Rainbow Defenders. And then they have turned into the Spila Collective, um, which has helped peaceful protesters during the women's strike movement. Um, when the women's strike uh, protests broke out in October, we started sleeping with phones in our hands because we never knew what times we would have to arrive at police precincts. Now, something else changed during those women's strikes movements, uh, the protests. We no longer only had to be awake for Warsaw-based police precincts. We also started being awake for police precincts outside of the city because that's what they started to do. They started driving people out 50 kilometers from the, from the city center. I was one of the lawyers who actually um, lives on the outskirts of the city, so I managed to um, cover one of the police precincts that was further out from the city. And believe you me, how the police were surprised when I turned up 20 minutes after uh, they arrived with the peaceful protesters. The thing is, they were driving out people who had absolutely no idea how to deal with police officers. We are not talking about hooligans. We are talking about peaceful protesters who were only exercising their right to peaceful protest and expressing themselves and freedom of speech. What Martha said, we are dealing with an attack on freedom of assembly. We are dealing with an attack on democracy. That's what we're fighting for. Uh, we are not fighting to, you know, just to fight with the police. We, are, we want to express our uh, views. The protesters want to express their views. And the fact that the police is treating them as if they were hooligans is something that worries me extremely from a legal perspective. From what I can tell you, there have been methods used that should never be used against peaceful protesters, such as the Kettling method. We were dealing with protests during the pandemic, and yet police forces were crushing people together in small groups, and they were not letting people out. They kept saying that this was a spread of the disease. Well, if you're pushing people together, regardless of the fact that they're all wearing masks and want to keep their distance, that's exactly what you're, you're actually doing. So that is the view um, from what I've seen. I have seen abuse of uh, using handcuffs for the longest periods of time with no justification whatsoever. Uh, people were thrown on the ground. People were detained in, um, with massive abuses of power. And uh, actions such as IDing people and basically frisking them was also abused. Um, all of the motions for detainments are now being heard Elisa, please, if you might just yeah. keep it short. Uh, so just to finish up, I'll just I'll just tell you that we are still hearing from uh, the August from last night's uh, Rainbow Night from last uh, year's Rainbow Night. Uh, some motions are still being heard. Um, some of charges are still being processed, um, as well as all the other women's strikes and protests uh, cases are also being heard right now, and the proceedings are ongoing. So this will not stop here. Um, and I just wanted to end with the fact that this is a message out to all of Europe, because this is a blueprint, nothing more, nothing less than a blueprint for other authoritarians. Thank you. Elisa, that was a very, very powerful both appeal and account of, of, of those uh, very worrisome developments. And now I would like to pass the floor to Ronald. And Ronald, if you could cut it short to two yeah. minutes or so, that would be very much appreciated. Sorry for this. Hi. Uh... Everyone, my name is Ronald Kraszewski. I'm the initiator of this appeal against the po police violence and impunity in Poland. I have represented uh, various uh, activists uh, ra uh, ranging from the LGBT uh, media, such as Homo Commando. By the way, I'm a member of Homo Commando, as well as the members of the Shadow of the Mist, Protesty and of course, ordinary Polish citizens who are fighting for the respect of basic human rights and social justice. Our appeal is a result of the escalation of violence by the police, Polish authorities, unjustified detentions, unconstitutional accusations, such as participation in gatherings, and the right to voice out our stand on the Polish uh, government's uh, legal 
uh, legislative measures aiming at violating our basic uh, human rights in a democratic country. Uh, the intensified repressions go back to 2015 when peace, uh, the law and justice uh, party took over the political sphere. The political activists and protesters are being harassed by the unlawful uh, checking of their IDs using pepper spray, physical violence, unjustified detention, refusal for legal aid and access to toilets when they're being detained, medical assistance and respectful treatment devoid of physical and mental abuse. The appeal has been signed by various signatories ranging from grassroots uh, activists from Shadow of the Mist, Combo Commando, Open Dialogue Foundation, Old Poland Women's Strike Foundation, Citizens of Poland, Protesty, and Consultative uh, Council at the um, National Women's Strike. For the time being, uh, this uh, document contains a list of 19 testimonials, which in a nutshell uh, describe the circumstances, uh, police response and subsequent events, uh, consequences uh, for the victims and the forms of abuse and bodily and mental harm. I would like to underline that this is an ongoing project where we'll be constantly adding any future and post uh, past cases that have been skipped at the moment. Uh, since we've had no response from the Polish prosecutor's office that is being controlled at the moment by the Peace Party, and on the social level, we're here by asking the EU representatives for help and intervention on our behalf. We're feeling helpless in the face of abuse of basic human and citizens' rights, the respect for our rights as stated by the Polish constitution, the constant harassment by the police and judicial authorities and the impunity of the perpetrators. As the Ronald, e Ronald, thank you so much. If you, if you could just uh, cut it short to one sentence, I will be grateful. Okay, so uh, basically we're asking the EU authorities and uh, uh, you, uh, the MPs, uh, for legal help and intervention because we're feeling helpless at uh, the current moment. We're getting no response uh, from the Polish authorities, Polish judicial system. We're simply ignored and treated as enemies, whereas we're fighting for our rights as citizens. Thank you, Ronald. I will make sure that uh, all of our uh, hosts will receive the appeal and the report. I actually sent it already, but as you mentioned, we just have started the report is covering only 19 cases, but there are by far more cases to cover, mm -hmm. which we will certainly do. And now the last speaker, Bartosz Kramek, uh, and then I hope we will have a few minutes to just allow our hosts and other uh, people who are watching us to ask some questions. Bartek, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kasia. I will do my best to be brief. Uh, first of all, uh, good morning. Hello, everyone. And uh, I would like to, to thank you all for your uh, solidarity and support by, uh, in custody uh, that I have uh, experienced recently while uh, being arrested for uh, three weeks. That was and still is extremely f f touching and uh, I do not deserve it. So once again, thank you. And uh, I just would like to use this opportunity to express my gratitude to, to you all. Uh, well, when it comes to uh, police, uh, to the police uh, brutality issue in Poland, I've been a civil activist for several years, uh, taking part in various pro-democratic protests primarily in defense of the constitution, women's rights and LGBT rights in Poland. And of course, there are many other uh, victims of the police uh, violence affected, harmed uh, much more than I've uh, been so far. But still, I would like to recount a story of uh, two incidents I, uh, I have encountered uh, in recent uh, months. First, in uh, January in 2021, I was detained with, with the use of uh, tear gas. Uh, right in front of my eyes, of my face, and that resulted in, uh, in 
in myself, um, f- finding myself uh, completely blind and, and immediately grounded. Uh, I requested a medical assistance, which was uh, denied to her, to me and uh, was taken to, to a police station, getting slightly better over, over time. I was also charged at the end of the day with assaulting some un- unidentified uh, policemen, uh, which is a criminal accusation. Later, I uh, found out that uh, the policemen detaining me uh, were kneeling on my neck and uh, head, having it completely grounded in a manner uh, very much resembling the situation, uh, the George Floyd uh, situation in the US uh, when, I, uh, when, when he had been uh, confronted by the police officers and uh, sadly strangled, died of uh, asphyxiation. Uh, thankfully, I... Uh, I was not not harmed uh, uh, in a significant way, and I saw it uh, later on the pictures because I was not really aware what uh, had been going on going on with uh, with me at uh, at the time. I was uh, pretty paralyzed by by the gas. Uh, still, my wife and friends were pretty 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 shocked when uh, when they uh, saw uh, the pictures and then the video. The live uh, streaming with uh, from the protest. Mm. Another situation uh, was uh, a protest, a manifestation uh, in front of, of the Russian embassy in Warsaw in defense of Alexei Navalny. Uh, that was uh, in May, uh, if I remember well, uh, this year. And around 100 of people uh, came, uh, including many foreigners, Russians, uh, Ukrainians, Belarusians, Georgians. Uh, to express their solidarity with uh, with Navalny, uh, the police started a mass identification action, uh, identification and disperse action, I would say, uh, and the pretext was uh, the pandemic and the executive order uh, of uh, of the minister of the government prohibiting public uh, gatherings at all, which is uh, simply against the constitution, which does not uh, allow it. Uh, and uh, that happened despite the people, the protesters, uh, keeping uh, the safe uh, distance between between them. There were families with uh, with children being frightened by by the police, and uh, the police were the police officers were identifying their parents for no apparent reasons. That was their impression, and because of the circumstances, I was uh, I find it particularly outrageous and as a Paul, I couldn't believe it uh, happens in New Orso, not in their native Eastern European countries. Uh, we were there with uh, Rujatun, uh, interfering a little and uh, preventing the identification of a father with, uh, with two children, uh, when the policemen were not even able or willing to provide uh, him with, uh, with their names and ranks and uh, the legal basis for their, uh, for their action. So uh, that is a kind of situation which is quite uh, usual, but because of the circumstances, that was even more outrageous than it usually is. And of course, uh, also my situation when I was uh, knocked out and presented with uh, criminal charges is also quite uh, typical. I must I must admit that is uh, that quite frequently happens to uh, to people uh, being themselves uh, uh, victims of uh, police uh, brutality in uh, in Poland. Uh, also, I, I just may uh, stop you right here uh, because uh, Michal Szymetka uh, must run now to attend another meeting. Uh, Michal, I'm sorry that uh, we ran out of time and thank you for being with us today. Maybe I will just pass the last word to you. Yes, I just wanted to say, um, I mean, li- listening to, I didn't want to interrupt, but listening uh, to, to, to all of you that it's indeed, as, as was said um, at the beginning, it's, uh, I guess, worse than people could have imagined. And and, and this was said by, by Roja and, and I have to agree that, um, that, that you know the scale and the the, the individual stories of, of, of this is uh, yeah be, beyond perhaps what, what what people know in Europe and and it's definitely what what uh, they should know uh, and I just wanted to say uh, that you know thank you for for all the courage and for all the for all the struggles that that you're going through and echo what my colleagues have said that this is indeed the struggle for the soul of Europe and I just wanted also to say that whenever. Uh, you know, you need any uh, any assistance, any support. Um, feel free to 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 enter us in the European Parliament, 
uh, there's a lot of support for your for your cause in the European Parliament. Um, so so you're not in this alone would be my message. But thanks so much. Thank you. And that was also my call, call to action to, to Micha and to all other uh, MEPs. Uh, you would like to, 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 to ask you to request your, uh, your help, if you could be of, uh, of help and pay attention to the situation in Poland, publicizing instances of harassment of activists and expressing support for them. Uh, that would be of great importance for, for us, perhaps pushing forward a, a resolution on the topic. It would be invaluable. Yes, we will certainly besiege you with a follow up with uh, with a more exact uh, call to action. So thank you once again. Thanks, Thanks Emil. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, Martha Lambert also had to run for another interview. Um, but then if, if that is fine with, with all of you, we can just reserve the additional five minutes for a very brief uh, Q&A. I just wanted to check with, with Ramona and Ruja first, whether they have any questions to our speakers. But maybe maybe there are other people who would like to say something from outside, no? Let us. Let's check if we have any questions on the chat, maybe. Um, maybe our colleague Jan, who is with us, can uh, check <coughs> since he's uh, monitoring our social media. Um, or, and maybe in the meantime, Did you Ramona. Check if I may yeah. just, yes. Please. Um, a few sentences, not, not more, because there's there's not really much to to add uh, to you know what what Mikal has said. I think undoubtedly you know that you can count on us, and that we will continue to pressure, and that we will try to get the maximum of, of these uh, actions. That we not only reactions like pressure, uh, and that rightfully mentioned by your uh, colleagues. Um, I I have an, ex an extremely small, small size of everything that you've been experiencing every single day. I, and I'm sure that other colleagues as well, have received threats directly via email on, on, upon us and our families for me, for example, for taking the floor in the plenary uh, in defense of the, the uh, abortion right in, in, in Poland and in defense of, of human rights, of course which did not prevent me to continue to speak up about it and to take every single action that we need to take so that your, your, your fight, can be, fight can be supported. So for as long as you can do it, just do it. Because you are not alone and you will never be alone. And you are part of a, of a country which is a, a member of the European Union and you do have rights which are defended by the Charter of Fundamental Rights and which will be defended by the Court of Human Rights and so on. So do not give up uh, and, and ask others more and more to join you because I know that you will succeed. I know this. It is only a matter of time. Nobody is eternal in power. And the more repressive, violent, aggressive and, and uh, uh, arrogant it is, the, the, the worse he or she will fall. So um, just keep it up. And thank you again for what you are doing. Thank you so much again, Ramona. And uh, so uh, I will give the very last floor. If, if Ruja, you would like to speak up, this is, uh, this is the moment. Thank you very much. In fact, there is, uh, I fully agree with you, Ramona, nothing to add. I would say, um, um, you know, um, we speak here only about Poland, but we should also um, have here friends uh, from Hungary, for example, who have an extremely difficult struggle. I'm not mentioning the countries outside of the European Union, um, but I am sure that there are many terrible cases and we should also deal with them. But um, uh, really dangerous is, the situation becomes more and more dangerous for the whole of European Union, when the cases that you have just described, Angelika, Bartosz, uh, Eliza, remind me more and more of what's going on in the Central Asia, Kazakhstan, for example. I also ODF, we deal a lot with, uh, with Kazakhstan. Um, and uh, it reminds the stories from the countries which are known for its dictatorship, brutality, um, lack of total, lack of respect for human rights, etc. Um, we in Poland are in a country where the prosecutor's office is completely politicized, where the judges are under an extreme political pressure. And so um, the whole uh, hope relies on the European Union. 
you know, I will tell from, um, as Ramona said, that we receive threats as politicians. Uh, you, uh, all Poles know the story about hanging our portraits on gallows in Katowice. You know that those people were not fined yet. If this is, the prosecutor described it as an um, uh, artistic event. You know, they hang six, they, they build six gallows and hang on those gallows pictures of six uh, members of the European Parliament who voted for Article 7 for Poland. So now uh, Marta Lempert demands co conditionality. Of course, it's an important instrument, but you can realize the threats that we will receive back in Poland. And then we are in a similar politician, similar situation as you are, which in fact is very good to understand at least a little bit through what the activists are going. Um, but the last thing I want to say, Ramona, we must really have an informal meeting with Michal, with Robert, etc., as soon as the parliament takes up again, September or whatever. We must create an informal group to reinforce the activities of the European Parliament to back up people like those here present and those who had already to leave us. And um, independently on what happens in commit committees like Libe. Um, and in uh, those groups, uh, like don't, I don't know, you know, those formal groups, um, we should really meet, exchange, stay in touch with all of you here um, and try to go faster forward than what happens in the parliament and be in constant contact with you. And I hope, Ramona, that, um, that you and Michal and others <clears throat> that we will do form this group and stay in touch and move things forward because within the framework of the European Union, such thing as those that you have just witnessed are completely unacceptable, cannot happen. And, and we as elected politicians, as elected members must have an influence. Otherwise it would mean that we don't fulfill our mandate properly. Thank you very much. And thank you for the meeting. Thank you, Ruja. And it seems that uh, it seems that we have two more questions from our Facebook audience. Uh, thank you for being with us. So if I just might very briefly, uh, Bartosz Łopecki is asking, based on participants' experience, what's the best course of action to stop police brutality that could actually work, given current ruling party supports it? Elisa, maybe, maybe you could uh, address this, this, this question, would you? The best course of action. Um, well, normally I would say, um, unfortunately, um, do allow yourself to get ID'd um, if stopped, uh, because we what we have witnessed was that people did end up in police precincts because of refusing to get ID'd, um, and then also always really be careful regarding um, whether a police officer uh, refuses to identify themselves. They do have a legal obligation to do that. Um, and then during, of course, uh, the detainment itself, exercise your rights. Um, we have actually created multiple closed guidelines for protesters um, that are available on the Spiele Collective uh, Facebook page. Um, but also really be wary of the fact that you do have possibilities to file motions um, against the detainments, um, following up the detainments, of course, um, to declare them illegal, unproportionate, and uh, baseless. baseless. Um, and there are lawyers who will be willing to take up the case. Um, regardless of all of that, do not hesitate to actually uh, file um, uh, in, uh, file motions concerning the uh, overall actions of the police officers. They are legally responsible for you once you're being taken into detainment and they are legally obligated to act within their rights and not outside of them. And we are always very uh, adamant about filing these motions after we have heard of any police assault. So we are still using the mechanisms that we would use in a democratic state of law and we are still acting as if we were in a democratic state of law. Uh, thank you. And just the last question, maybe Bartek, you could handle it. Um, Ivan, um, Ivan Debara, I, I hope I, I'm pronouncing it co correctly. Sorry, Ivan, for this. What can EU citizens from other member states living in Poland do? Bartek, do you have any 
Well, I wanted to add a couple of words uh, regarding uh, uh, Elisa's uh, proposals and uh, the initial question, uh, what can be done? Uh, first of all, of not knowing your rights and uh, trying to identify uh, for police officers uh, abusing their, their powers and then publicizing uh, the events that uh, are, taking, are taking place, uh, naming, blaming, shaming, and also, I wanted to, to refer to, to our project, to Kasia's uh, personal project, as Kasia's uh, uh, um, its, uh, coordinator, Listy Hanby, which serves to, uh, for, to uh, highlight those uh, officers and uh, civil servants responsible for uh, different, uh, uh, sort of, different sorts of uh, abuse against peaceful, peaceful protesters. Uh, I would like to encourage you to stay in touch with uh, with us to pay attention to ODF's activities uh, as it's uh, as it's about to be uh, to be launched. That should happen in the nearest uh, nearest weeks. When it comes to uh, for, to citizens of uh, uh, other EU countries living in Poland, uh, well, uh, you can also. Uh, support us, express your solidarity, even in a symbolic manner, uh, it's of great importance. Uh, uh, you should uh, follow what's, uh, what's going on in the media, on, on social media channels of uh, human rights uh, watchdogs. And you should also, if you have such an opportunity, you should also uh, try to address your uh, countrymen, your own MPs and MEPs and the media, uh, that's all. Uh, that that is very important. We we cannot uh, do much nowadays in in Poland uh, uh, because of the politicization of the law enforcement agencies. But uh, still, the fight goes on, and uh, we can't uh, we can't give up. And any form of solidarity uh, would be of uh, of great importance, and we would be very grateful for that. Um, since we already run out of time, I will stop right there and thank you to all the participant, participants. We will follow up with, uh, with the stories we shared today and some more stories. Uh, we will also follow up with some exact asks. Um, and again, sorry for um, taking some more time from your, as I know, very tight schedules. And one more, uh, just one more last final remark. Uh, there is uh, a fundraising on Zutka.pl uh, pertaining to, to Listy Hanbe. Uh, please uh, uh, visit it. And if you can, if you are asking how to, how to help, you can also uh, donate and that will be a very practical support. Okay, thank you, Bartek, for this, for this call. And again, thank you to everyone, including our Facebook audience and Twitter audience. Um, just to translate, Listy Hanbe is a um, um, hall of shame in, in, uh, in English, so you know what we're talking about for the English speaking audience. Thanks. Sorry. Okay, guys, so thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Jinky, ciao. Jinky.